I'm just, I've just finished it. But something that's interesting about Mitt Romney is he doesn't really live anywhere. Right. right? His dad yeah, really point. lived in Michigan. Yeah. And that was where his business was. It's where his life was. Someone like Mitt Romney, he has houses all over the place. And his business requires him. It requires him not really to have roots in any particular community. I think that voters sense that. And I, I'm, not, I'm not attacking him for no, it. No, it's, it's, it's a fact of the American elite. Right now, but I think that people say, wait a minute, actually, my life isn't a portfolio investment, right. and I'm kind of scared of a guy whose paradigm is that. And, and what's fascinating is that he tries to use this sort of ruthless cosmopolitanism in every state in which he has a plausible claim to home state this. <laughs> so New Hampshire is a home state because he owns a right there, right. but now he's, he's driving around Detroit. Right. Well, he, he, he doesn't live anywhere, <laughs> right? right? You can see how it's connected to taxes, and, and here's how. So, George Romney... Walk me through right? it. And I swear this is gonna this is gonna work. George Romney, one of the most famous things that he did to really show uh, that he was a, a moderate Republican is he uh, led the change to the state constitution to raise an income tax in Michigan to fund Detroit schools. Wow. You do that. You want taxes for your community when you feel like it's your community. That's a great point. Right? So the you can't have a, a desire to fund your your community's future, a desire to fund your neighbors, when you don't have a sense of the neighborhood. And that's why you can see someone like Mitt Romney and a lot of his peers really feeling like, quote, I don't want to put you know my money in that deficit sinkhole that right. is the American right. budget. Yeah, that's a really good point.